Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run iPhone and iPad apps that are not available to download on the Mac Apple Store, um, despite the fact that we are running the M1 Apple Silicon chip on the new MacBook Air 2020. So one of the main new features of the Apple Silicon M1 chip is that it's able to play iPhone and iPad apps natively in the desktop environment. And uh, many of the apps are really great. For example, LumaFusion is a native iPad and iPhone app, which the developer has opted in and has allowed users to install and run on the new Apple Silicon M1 Mac line. And it works pretty well and it could be optimized further, but we're glad that the developer has opted in and allowed it to be downloaded from the Mac App Store. However, there are a lot of apps on the um, iPhone and iPad ecosystem, which you can't download on the M1. And um, fortunately, there's a fix that's been found that can allow us to install any app that we've previously downloaded on an iPhone or iPad, as long as it's associated with our Apple ID. And as you can see in front of me, I've installed a bunch of these apps which are not available yet. So for example, in the center here, we've got Instagram. If, you do, if we do a search for Instagram on the Apple Store, we can see that the app is not available. And then um, all we've got are these uh, kind of lookalike apps, which are not the official Instagram app. But um, here I've installed the official Instagram app for um, the iPhone and it's running natively on the um, desktop Mac. And as you can see on the left here, we've got uh, Call of Duty mobile. And this is the um, what appears to be the iPad version of the game. And it's running pretty flawlessly, except for the fact that the controls really rely on the mouse and it's not optimized for keyboard and mouse gameplay at all. But it does actually work and um, it's very impressive nevertheless. And uh, you can you could actually play this game, although you can't really run and move at the same time. Here we've got Angry Birds. This is another game that's not available to play on the App Store, but it's completely playable here. Um, albeit for the fact that it's in a running in a tiny window that cannot be resized. So let me just show you um, a level. And uh, it does in fact run. And um, we can't resize this window or full screen it. But I suppose if we lowered the resolution, it would occupy more of the screen space and it would actually be sort of playable. And it'd be interested in seeing if there are any kind of hacks or um, tools we can use to increase the sizing of these windows. Um, I suspect it's on a per app basis. Some apps can be resized, like the LumaFusion app, and these ones, which are not designed in any way, shape or form to be used on a desktop Mac. Um, they cannot be customized at all. Um, I've also got a copy of Civilization VI running on this um, computer. And um, this is the iPad version of the game, basically. And it does actually work. And what's surprising as well is that um, I can actually use some of the keyboard shortcuts. There are some other shortcuts too, which you can find. If I press escape, I get to the options menu and there's a bunch of key bindings, which I'm assuming are the same key bindings as you'd get if you were on an iPad Pro or an, a regular iPad with a Bluetooth keyboard. And um, we can um, set some of these, uh, use some of these shortcuts. This Y key gives us the yields of the the, uh, the tiles which are there. So yeah, it actually does work and uh, and it runs pretty well actually. Um, I can actually, let me see, I can, I can also zoom using two fingers and um, yeah, that gesture works. So yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting proposition. Of course, there's also a desktop version of Civilization VI as well and um, so this, this is not particularly appealing, but um, it's, it's interesting that it works. So the piece of software we need is called iMazing, and we can get it from the iMazing website, and I'll leave a link in the description for this piece of software. It is a paid for software, but the free trial allows us to do everything we need to do to get the apps from your phone or iPad 
onto the computer. What you need to do first is to have the software open and then you need a cable to connect your computer to your iPhone. So I'm gonna connect mine now and just show you how to pair the uh, phone or iPad with your device. So I've plugged in my phone and I'm going to swipe open and then I'm going to trust this computer. Then I'll enter my passcode and then it's going to pair the desktop computer with the phone. Now, once this is done, um, it's gonna ask us to do a backup. Now, actually for what we're gonna do, we don't actually need to do a backup at all. So I'm gonna press later on this. So um, once that's done, we can see the iPhone here on the left and we've got some options here on the right. So I'm just gonna expand this a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And um, what you can see is that we have an option here to manage apps. So if we click on this now, it's going to build a list of apps that we have available. So the left tab here shows the apps that are currently um, installed and downloaded on the iPhone. And on the right, we have um, the list of apps that's available to download. I would actually start from the library and I would download apps from here. So I've downloaded plenty already. What I'd like to do is to download a new app from the library. So for example, let's download this game called Final Fantasy VI. So if I want to download this, I am simply click on the download button and it's going to download onto the computer. So once that download's complete, we'll see a green tick here. So what we wanna do is hold down the control key and then click on this row. And then we want to click the button export.ipa. So what I'm gonna do is put this with the rest of my IPA installers, and I'll show you where that is now. So here I have my list of IPA files, and the latest one I have here is the Final Fantasy VI one. So what I'm gonna do is double click on this, and it's going to install the IPA. Once that's done, it's put it inside my applications folder, and I'm gonna double click on it now. Here we have Final Fantasy VI running the iOS version of the game on my desktop on my Mac. This looks like it's working quite well, um, and um, I expect it to be playable throughout. So I'm gonna close this now. Um, you can kind of see here, a list of games which kind of work and kind of don't work. So for example, these, this list of games works quite well and this app works fine. Um, lots of games are quite buggy. I can actually open Genshin Impact and actually download a lot of the content of the game. But once I try to enter the gameplay portion, it actually crashes. So if I, I can actually open this and log into my account, etc. And when I press click to begin, works right until we get to the, the doorway and I click tap to begin and it's going to crash. Some other games like Pokemon Go don't work at all. So they'll just crash straight away. But there's a fair portion of games which do work quite well. So for example, Civilization Revolution 2, the, uh, the mobile version, Works really fast, seems quite stable, seems actually quite playable, which is surprising. So yeah, it, it's quite a, it's quite surprising how well this works, um, despite the fact that lots and lots of developers have opted out. Other games like Plants vs Zombies 2 seems to work pretty flawlessly. So for example, this game never actually came out on, on any desktop format, only on mobile. This is probably the first time you could play this game virtually natively without using BlueStacks or some kind of Android emulator and run it directly on a desktop and for it to run quite well. So, you know, it, the, the, the performance is really good. I don't think it's going to crash very much. It seems to be quite stable and because of the, the nature of the type of game this is, it's very playable with, with just a mouse.
Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tech video.